Today, we will talk about the respiratory system, the system that allows for gas exchange to take place, okay? It involves the lungs, the blood, and your tissues and the capillaries. So let's begin first with, with how breathing occurs. Breathing is, is largely a physical thing, okay? So breathing involves the movement of air from an area of high pressure to low pressure. That's how air moves, okay? So the respiratory system, air in bulk moves from high pressure to low pressure. That's how air moves. And so as long as you create the pressure differences or pressure gradients, air will move. And the, the way that air, that pressure is changed in our bodies is by how we change our volumes. And pressure and volume are linked in, in what's called Boyle's, Boyle's Law, where, which states that, so Boyle's Law states that pressure and volume change inversely. So basically, if volume goes up, pressure goes down. If volume goes down, pressure goes up, okay? So meaning, and, 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 and we use the volume part as, the, as the, the independent variable here in this case, okay? So, so you increase volume, that will cause pressure to drop. And vice versa, you decrease volume, that leads to an increase in pressure. That's the Boyle's Law relationship between pressure and volume. Normally, normally it's written this way. So in, in any closed system, pressure times the volume at condition one must equal to the pressure times the volume at condition two. That's right. So for example, here, if the pressure here is 100 um, and the volume is 50, if over here you change the volume to be, say, 100, now the pressure must be 50. All right, so as the volume doubled, the pressure was halved, okay? Because it must change inversely. That, 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 that's Boyle's law. So keeping that in mind, let's look, then look at how we, how we are able to change the pressure in our lungs simply by using our breathing muscles, the diaphragm, the intercostals to increase the thoracic volume, which causes the lung to expand, thereby increasing lung volume, thereby affecting pressure in the lungs. Okay. Let's try that. So, when you breathe, it's, it's you rest, inhale, rest, Exhale, rest. It's not constant. There are phases to it. And so we're going to look at the various pressure dynamics, different um, balance that we have on, under those conditions. So at rest, again, at rest, the pressure in the room or where we are in the, in the, in the environment, it's called the pressure of the atmosphere in, in, in the environment, is equal to. 760 millimeter of mercury. That is the typical ambient pressure across the, the almost entire world. This is what it is. Let's, let's see the mountains, but it, it's, it's a bit lower there. Okay. So at sea level, 760 millimeter of mercury. And in our lungs, so we call it P lungs, it's equal to, also equal to 760. So in this case, the reason why air is not moving is because the air is the, the, the pressure is equal in both both environments. So, there, so here there's no movement because there is no difference to move the air. So here, no movement occurs here. Then you go to when you start to then inhale. Let's say you rest in the inhale, you do this. You drop the diaphragm down. That it, and, and, you, and you lift up the ribs. So that, that increases the volume in your lungs. And if volume increases, 
pressure will drop. So what happens is this. So at so during inhalation here, the pressure again in the room is all the same. 760. But then the pressure in the lungs, because you are flaring the ribs, now the pressure drops to about, to about 757. Okay? And that's a normal, normal, what's called normal quiet breathing. It's just this. To do this, this probably would down to 730. More, more, more dramatic drop. But for normal restful breathing, just this movement, it's around it's about a three difference, three millimeter mercury difference, difference there. And so because the pressure is higher outside than inside, air will go into the lungs. Okay? And it will go in until the pressure is equal in both, in both environments. So now you're back to rest here. So you rest again, okay? Where you have seven, where again, the pressure in the room is 760. The pressure in the lungs is 760. Again, no movement here occurs. Because the pressure is the same. And then to exhale, you're an exhalation. Apologize for these garbage pens. An exhalation here, you now, the diaphragm will come back up. Your ribs will drop down, and now the, the volume in the lungs will decrease, which will cause the pressure to increase. So here, during quiet exhalation, the pressure again in the atmosphere in the room is always 760. And now the pressure in the lungs will go up to around 763. And so the air will leave the lung and go out, flow out and bulk until you back to here. So it's a cycle. Rest, inhale, rest, exhale. That cycle and air moves, always moves from high pressure to low pressure. High pressure to low pressure. When it's equal, it starts moving. So that's the physical aspects of, of, of breathing. Just by varying your pressures, or just by you adjusting your volume with this movement of the lungs and the diaphragm, you will automatically affect the pressure. And then the pressure will drive the air down it, down, always from high, high, high pressure to low pressure. Okay, we'll pause there.